should she have resigned earlier? If you look at it in hindsight, when she was first called to give uh, evidence at the commission, should it have been all over back then as opposed to waiting for a few years later to make the announcement she'd resigned in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of New South Wales lockdown? Should she have just called it earlier in hindsight? Well, you know, it's always easier in hindsight to look at these things and, and say probably yes, um, but uh, you don't get the chance to undo the past. Uh, she, she did what she did. Uh, she continued on with, uh, you've got to say, the great strength she's always shown. She's a very strong woman. And uh, as I said, I take no glee in what's now happening. What happens to her next? Of course, we know she's an executive at Optus and she's expected to remain in that position, though we are expecting a statement uh, to come through from Optus, uh, hopefully in the next 45 minutes or so. But what happens to her now? What happens to her career? Well, I don't think she's going to have much of a career from now do, on. Do you think, sorry, think she'll, be, do you think she'll go? Do you think she'll go from Optus? Yeah, I think uh, Optus will will not put, uh, make, make it seem like this, but uh, she'll resign. I'd be very surprised if Optus kept her on. OK, so I mean, where does that leave her? Uh, there's no joy for Gladys, no matter which direction she looks. And I think that's really sad. As I said, I take no glee or satisfaction from it. But uh, Gladys Berejiklian has hit a dead end. So even you, you're really confident, though, that Optus just can't keep her on? I mean... Would there be reason, though, for them to continue with, with her as she's done a, a seemingly good job at Optus by all accounts? I think after a finding like this, it doesn't matter what the company is, they can't keep you on. And I don't believe they will. That, you know, she'll just resign and, and Optus will, will, will give her a, a great send-off. They won't um, uh, say, oh, yeah, we got in there first and told her to go. That won't happen. Um, but that is what will happen in reality. I just won't tell you. Uh, in terms of ICAC, we know this has taken 18 months for them to hand down this report, which is seemingly a very long time. And yesterday, the New South Wales government uh, has agreed to introduce new laws whereby any deadline would be self-imposed. They want to try and tighten that deadline. But 18 months, that's, that's a long time for something like this, do you think? Well, it's a long time to put your life on hold, and that's what's, in effect, happened. Uh, ICAC's always been notoriously slow. I mean, I've never been happy with ICAC's existence, let alone um, its performance. So, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'd just get rid of the bloody thing. Um, uh, and, and I'd say to the police, this is your job, do it. Um, uh, and I think that's what should have happened. But nonetheless, we've got ICAC. Uh, I guess it'll stay. Uh, I, uh, I think it could probably deal with some reform. And uh, this uh, whole episode may give us the impetus to see some of that reform occur. What sort of reform do you think? We, we heard just a short time ago from the New South Wales Premier, Chris Minns. He says, we must manage conflicts of interest and declare them. That was his key line there. What sort of reforms do you think are needed? I think you, you, we've got to make it much harder for um, uh, any MP to hide... Uh, what their interests are. At the moment, it's still pretty easy. Uh, you know, you, if you're a, a person who doesn't mind cutting a corner, uh, then uh, you can hide whatever you like. And so, I, well, not quite whatever you like, but it's, it's not too difficult to hide interests. And uh, I think that's a, a, a bad thing. Uh, I don't like the idea of uh, politicians having no private life, but I think that's the position you're in in the modern era. You forget about privacy uh, because your whole life is, is open to investigation. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough life. Before we, we let you go, how do you think Gladys Berejiklian would be feeling right now? These allegations are, well, they're extremely, extremely serious. And at the time, she put a, her faith in a man, Daryl Maguire, that she uh, said was her num numero uno. That's how she referred to him. What do you think she'd be thinking right now? Oh, I think she'd be thinking what a mug she was to be taken in by a clown like him. Yeah, you'd think so uh, too. Well, uh, look, you know, it's... What a day. I mean, these are huge allegations. Corruption findings have been found against two individuals. One of those, of course, is the former New South Wales Premier, Graeme Richardson. It's been great to speak with you. 
Thank you so much for your analysis and insight on what's a huge day in New South Wales. Pleasure.